Hello and welcome to Fun with Pair Programming, an introduction to pair programming for students. If you're a student who is new to pair programming, you've come to the right place. This video will help provide valuable information to make you the best pair programmer you can possibly be in your classes and beyond. Pair programming refers to the practice whereby two programmers work side by side on one computer, collaborating on the same design, algorithm, code, or test. The pair is made up of a driver who actively types at the computer or records a design and a navigator who watches the work of the driver and identifies problems, asks clarifying questions, and makes suggestions. Switch roles from time to time to share the work evenly and get the most out of your pair programming experience. You'll hear effective pairs constantly chatting as they jointly decide how to tackle the task at hand. Well, actually, I don't even know where it's saving <laughs> this stuff. So we create a new patient and that's record, oh, All right. probably in save, save data, data file. file. Mm -hmm. So it's going through, looks like a list of records. Mm -hmm. So we probably, since we just added the height and weight, I don't know if that's actually getting written. Yeah, probably not. Okay. So. Why do so many thousands of students around the world prefer pair programming? Why don't we ask some? to compare yeah. old-fashioned solo programming yeah. to this new and innovative system. Wait, what was the order? You would program by yourself, so you'd usually be just by yourself in a, a computer, maybe in a cube or at a, a single desk, and it's a very uh, lonely type thing. <laughs> it can be. Well, it could be really frustrating. You'd sit there banging your head against a desk and uh, trying to find you know, the missing bracket or couldn't figure out why the logic in your program didn't quite work right. And with two people there, it's, it's a lot easier to, to work those problems out a lot more quickly so you're not frustrated all the time. This is nothing new either. Most science labs take advantage of lab partners and small groups. Computer science is no different. You can learn a lot from working with other people. Students find it helps them get better scores on programming projects. Pair programming helps them learn, so they get better grades on exams as well. Mostly, students report that they enjoy getting to know the people in their classes better. This makes it much easier to interact when problems do arise, because you've got a class full of friends instead of strangers. Last, but certainly not least, students are much more likely to figure out solutions if they've got someone to brainstorm with, and this can lead to faster completion times and a better understanding of the subject matter. Students often find the whole experience much more enjoyable and less frustrating. Pair programming will also help you prepare for your career in computer science. In the professional world, people collaborate and pair program all the time. And as an expert, you'll already be ahead of the game. Have you ever spent most of your class time with your hand in the air, getting nowhere on a project while you wait for help from your professor or lab instructor? With pair programming, those days are history, and you'll find yourself having a lot more fun. Who knows? Maybe you'll even look forward to the alarm going off in the morning so you can get to class. Now that you know the basics, let's look at some simple do's and don'ts of pair programming. First, be sure to talk. Not a minute should go by when you're not communicating somehow. Don't say anything that might insult your partner. Even if you're only joking, he or she might take it personally. Don't forget to listen, too. Both the driver and the navigator should be fully engaged in the project, so much so that the driver can pass the keyboard to the navigator at any time and he or she will be ready for the switch with no questions asked. Periodically switch positions so you can gain experience in both roles. Switching helps prevent errors and stimulates conversation too. Be patient. Be prepared to explain yourself to your partner and don't get frustrated if they don't understand it first. By explaining your work to your partner, you'll be helping yourself learn as well. Remember the ancient Chinese proverb, to teach is to learn. 
and be sure to give the driver a little time to correct his or her own mistakes. After all, no one likes a backseat driver. Respect your partner. The golden rule is key here. Just remember to treat your partner with the same level of respect that you expect from him or her. It doesn't matter if they are from another culture, an introvert, an extrovert, a procrastinator, or the valedictorian. We are all here to accomplish one thing, and everyone has something to offer. Take breaks. You can get more done in one hour pair programming than in several hours by yourself. But this can take a toll on your brain. Don't forget to take a break every so often to keep yourself fresh and energetic. When you return, you'll likely see something you overlooked before. Be prepared. Be sure to do any preliminary work ahead of time and don't be late for appointments with your partner. Their time is valuable, as is yours. Hygiene. Think about it. How would you feel if the person you were going to spend a couple of hours with smelled terrible? Take a shower, brush your teeth, bring some mints. You know the drill. Have fun! Working with someone else can be a lot more fun than working by yourself. You can share a laugh, relieve some tension, and have someone to celebrate with when you get that last test case to pass. Believe me, that's a great feeling. Now that we've gone through all the things you should do as a pair programmer, let's go through some of the things you should avoid when working with your partner. Don't be a keyboard hog, or think that just because your partner is a novice and you're more experienced, that they won't bring something to the table. Don't constantly tell other people what to do either. You don't want to be the only person in the class that no one wants to work with because you're too bossy. There is another side to that coin, so don't be intimidated. Some people are afraid that they don't know enough, but chances are your partner feels the same way, and you both know way more than you give yourself credit for. Trust me, it will all be fine. The primary goal of pairing is to work together towards the best possible solution, so don't be afraid to speak up if you disagree with your partner from time to time. Your partner may as well be working alone if you're not willing to speak up. If you're unhappy with your pair programming situation for any reason, don't hesitate to talk to your professor or teaching aide. That's their job, and they will be happy to help you resolve whatever problem you may have. As you can see, there are many benefits to pair programming, but there are also a few speed bumps. Sometimes you'll find it difficult to find time in your schedules to meet, for example. But students all over the world agree that the benefits outweigh any drawbacks that they can find. If there's two of you working on it, typically you're spending a lot less time working on it, so this is great for homework. Uh, then also I would say that in general, uh, your solution is going to be better. So if you're working with somebody in, in their grade or their um, deadline matters to you, you're more likely to get your work done at an earlier time. Also with pair programming, you can typically have higher grades on assignments. There's higher quality code as well. This concludes our journey through the exciting world of pair programming, but there's still much to learn. Take these tips with you into your next pair programming lab and join the growing number of pair programmers across the country, the world, and beyond!